Okay, <clears throat> here's your stock kicker cover here. So it's the original Harley one. Just gonna make sure it's got some threads in there. Looks like it is. Somebody stuck a stupid ass O-ring under here to try to make it so it would not leak. The only problem is nothing really hold a plug in there because it's, the rubber gives out and the plug falls out. So that's kind of stupid. I'd rather have the leak. Okay, this one here has got the normal uh, brakes in it already. So at some point this piece here where my thumb is gonna fall out. So we're gonna uh, do the normal thing. We're gonna leave it. It's just, it's just getting broken in. There's an O-ring that's way down in there. Right in the middle of those two bushings. So here's the new O-ring. Hopefully it's the right one. Here's the, um, yeah, this piece of crap we took off. So once again, here's that gear there. So this one here I cleaned up, so it doesn't look any better. It looks just as crappy as it did before. It didn't get any better from where? What a shocker. So anyway, but there's what we're gonna make different. Okay, now these pieces over here, what happens with these is these start burning up right in here, the tops of these teeth, because they engage in this kicker gear here. And when this thing doesn't disengage, because it's all screwed up like this one's getting to be, it doesn't disengage the teeth the way like it's supposed to, so these wind up rubbing on themselves like this as the bike's running, so it burns them up. So when you see bad gears here, that gear is bad too. So don't forget. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to make this live longer. So what happens is this goes on there like this. Here's how it assembles. It assembles like this on the bike. So this edge here is what eats up this here. Because this is supposed to disengage when it hits that. Oop, figure it out. This is supposed to disengage it when it hits it. Kicks it out of gear like this. When it hits the ramp and lifts up, disengages this gear. All right, so these things here are sharp. Like I said, these are heat treated, so it's like a little cutting bit every time it hits it. So what I do is I come in here, I grind these, and I chamfer these edges, radius them off, whatever you want to call it. Get rid of that sharp edge. That should make it disengage better over here and not dig in so much. So this is not heat treated, this one is, so I'm going to use this one because it's heat treated. That'll, that'll make it live better in its own. But chamfering these edges here will make it live a lot longer too. So I do this every time I do a bike now. And I usually tell the customer I sell a set of kicker gears to go grind them. I doubt if they do, but oh well, I tell them to do it. They can do what they want. Now, I don't know if that makes it live any longer, but it makes me feel better, so that's all that really matters. Grinding junk around here. Like somebody's doing supporting or something. Things everywhere. Alright, I need and I need this guy right here. So I need a sanding disc. So I'm gonna go in here and like this and grind, 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 grind every one of these teeth. Try not to get yourself. That's optional though, if you want to get yourself. So if you do one side at a time, so that way you don't get confused, you can do that. So see how it radiuses off that one tooth? That one side of the one tooth, not all of them. A 45 degree chamfer is all I'm doing on it. Rolling around.
All right, so you get the idea how we do it. So I just chamfer them over a little bit. I'm not sure how much I need to do, but I just hit them a little bit. All right, I'll be back in a little bit. All right, I got them all ground out now. So now you can see how they're all ready to ground all the way around. So when you run your finger across, nothing grabs a hold of you now. So it gives you a nice radius surface. So hopefully that'll make it live longer. Who knows? Find out, I guess. So anyway, it goes in there like this. So as long as it slides nice and easy like this, that's what we're after. It's just, Slides real nice and easy right now. It's not trying to dig in at all. See how the chamfer makes a bite in there, just goes slides, slips right on over. See. All right, so we're gonna go with that. Hopefully, it does what we want. We'll find out, I guess. All right, now I'm gonna swap out some pieces over here. First, let's see if we can get this O-ring out of here. Easier said than done a lot of times. A lot of times these things are petrified in here, so let's see how let's see what we got here. Slides out every now and then, but I'll get under it. Screwdrivers. Uh. Absolutely no light when you work in the bottom of a hole. Doesn't seem to be uh, helping much there with the other screwdriver. Try to bite into that sucker. Well, it does just spin in a circle, so it's hard to get in under it. Easier just to push the damn bushings out of this thing and push them right back in when you're done. It's probably easier because this isn't working for a squat. If I had a little bit of a 45 degree on this, it would work. It would help a lot. But that ain't what I got. Yeah, I'm done screwing around with this damn thing. It ain't worth it. We got other tools that work better. Hydraulic press. Be here for 20 minutes trying to get that stupid ass seal out one piece at a time. Versus using this tool right over there, which you need to use. Okay, so on the wrong side, of course. My felt tip pin out, missing as usual. 
Okay, so we're gonna what are you looking at over there? Nothing. Get this thing blown up. No. Okay, put two dots going up. And that one. Only got one on this side. Put the bushings back where they come from. They should go back together about the same way. in there until that bushing is not doing anything there okay I didn't shove that one all the way through so now I can just take this one and shove it straight back down There's the petrified seed I was picking on trying to get out. Feels like hard rubber. Okay, so this bush in here we're gonna put back and that mark goes up. And that was right on the edge of this crack right here is where I lined it off of. This bushing's not very tight here. Probably lubricate it a little bit of Loctite. Sleeve retainer lock that works good on everything. If all else fails, lock tight the damn thing. Wipe off some of the oil. Not all of it, just some of it. Okay, put the lock tight on there too. Cover is definitely not brand new. But it looks a lot better than that piece of crap I took off. There, you're not supposed to be able to push your bushing in by hand, so that's not how they're supposed to be. There, we're done. Don't need to press on it either. That's a good fitting bush in there, let me tell you. how you make them good. Good as new. Now you gotta put a rubber on it. Alright. Yeah, more parts. Back to real work area. Up and down. Okay. Now, is this seal the same one? Yeah, maybe. Look how much thinner it is, though. They're cheating. You can almost put two of them in there. I think the old seal is probably better than the new seal. I might be putting it back in there. I didn't totally destroy it. Yeah, I probably did there, though. Okay, take that off. Pre-lubed. Yeah, it's got some tension on it. I can live with that. Okay, so now you just gotta push this thing back down the hole there. that and you push it in this side. And 
goes in there, see? See in there or not. Maybe give it the chrome. Okay. This side's already pre lubed. This side's a little dry, so you need some lubricant. Just happen to have a little bit of lubricant right over here in the, in the container. Perfect. Oh, I forgot to put the other shaft in. Where's the other piece at? It's easier to do this part here right now. Okay, this is the fork here. Looks like that's held on with a snap ring. This is this is a heavy duty cover, so you cannot use this one. This one does not work. This one works with a heavy duty cover. Damn it. Let me find me a real one to use. Alright, interruptions. I go find me a correct uh, lever assembly. We'll be back. Alright, we're back. In hindsight, I probably should have showed you what I did, but oh well. So this is a crappy ass shaft I came up with. Original Harley. It's heat treated, very hard to work with. Had a little bit of rust here and there on it, no big deal. Someone took a big hammer to the end of this thing and beat the tar out of it. So they mushroomed it out, the threads. But these are these are heat treated, they're really hard. So I had to actually go in there and single point the thread off for the first eighth of an inch. And then dye it, and the dye didn't want to cut anything because it's so hard. So I dyed it, got it on there. The nut doesn't want to quite go all the way on there, but it does go down. So it'll be a nice tight fit with a nut. There's a cotter key. So let's see if the lever fits on here. Okay, it's going to be a tight fit on the lever. Everything appears to be a tight fit because it's original. There you go. There's a good spot. Fits there. Alright, I think we're going to have a choice. Okay, now this one here is tight also on this end. See, it's tighter on that spot than that spot. Found a spot yet where it goes all the way down. This is our best spot, was right here. Alright, so that's as far as we're going to get with that. Okay, I found me a wash that goes right there, and the cotter key dropped down on the ground. So this one takes a cotter key, which don't fall off. I'm like snap rings, e clips, not even snap ring, e clip, it falls off. These are a lot better. This here is a nice heat treated stock lever, real strong. Those are weak ass aftermarket levers that like to break. So look how much thicker these things are, a lot stronger. So everything about these old parts here are better. You just got to detail them a little bit to make them usable. Okay, so that's why I like using Harley parts, not modern reproduction crap. Because nobody makes it any good. Okay, so now see if this thing will fit together. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly where our center point is, but it should be at the bottom of this. Looks like it's relatively close to being the center line. You want the center of this to be in the center of that right there. There is no seal on this. You beat it in until it's all the way in. Like it could be just a tick up from the bottom. See that center right there. Whoop. It goes down that much further. I don't think that's going to really hurt anything now. It looks like there's a bushing down that's not quite all the way in. So when you beat this in, it'll be further in yet. Okay. Put a little oil on this. Once again, we got a whole bunch of assembly oil right over there in the corner. So let's go ahead and loop everything all up, including the square. Let's see which side fit in the best. Definitely this side here was the better of the two. Okay. It's 
so so far from center we are centered pretty far off so I can put a little thin washer in there real thin or we try to move this bushing up a little bit with some heat a little heat on that thing and slide it on up. That works too. Just until the washer on the other side is a problem. It's kind of a toss up on which one's better. I think heating the bushing up is probably your better option. I think that'll probably work better. All right. Let's see if we can put this together. First problem is the washer won't fit in between it and the shaft. Yeah, trying to. Tight fit. Shoes are tight. That went down. There it goes. Hopefully this washer will go in here. Or washer. Cotter key. Oh, it fit. Perfect. Self-bending. Okay. Where's my pliers at? Buried over in the corner. There we go. Okay, caught a key on getting away now. Yeah, it's got plenty of inplay to go wherever the hell it wants to. Figures. Okay, so. Bushing is not keeping it, it's the everything else is. Yeah, shouldn't matter. I'm gonna worry about it. There's nothing hardly as precision. So if I put a wash in there, it'd probably be. I ain't gonna worry about it. Nothing appears to be tight on this application. Okay, it's falling off a little bit. There it goes. Okay, kicker goes around like that. We haven't changed from where it was, so this is where it goes. Okay, where's our new gear at? New gear goes down here. See, genuine Harley gear has a stop on it right here, which engages right up in here. So it keeps the lever wound up. See, you can keep the levers under tension right now. The aftermarket gears do not have that. See, there's no stop pin. So this goes in this corner here. All right, so that makes it a little bit easier to put the cover together. You have to hold it, which makes it a hell of a lot easier. 
left out. I'm not using that nut. I used a genuine Hurley nut here. Whether that's better or worse is debatable, but probably is better nut. Okay, this is this one here. That's ever extra, extra tight. If I keep that up, I'll just round it off because that's tight. Okay. I'm going to try to bend that tab up. Make sure the kicker still works. It does. It goes halfway around. Oh yeah. It's got some serious tension on that thing. Yeah, it winds up pretty far. Okay, my little prick punch thing, wherever it went to. Looks like I put that away. Figures. I'm gonna go grab it real quick. goes in here and bends the tab up a little bit so you can get under it like that okay I need a screwdriver some of the damn screwdriver way to hell over here I can't get to it people who would do that Okay, that one's bent down. All right, we're good to go. Okay, this is pretty well ready to go together. On this part, but we have other issues. We haven't put any other stuff together yet. Okay, so now we got more parts here that need to go back together over on this side. Now, it probably won't hurt to clean a muck out of the case. See the muck in there? That's called muck. Okay. That is a vintage used Charlie tranny. See all the metal in there? That's how you know they're in good condition. Full of metal everywhere. Okay, show you back over there. Okay, now it looks like it appears we're missing uh, five studs out of nine. And this one's been butchered a little bit. So that makes it more than five, right? Okay, so I'm going to go find me some studs and some nuts and some washers, and then we can put this thing together. We'll be back.